we're the time zone junkies and we're hitchhiking from Turkey to Kyrgyzstan and we would like you to follow us on our journey. Last year we hitchhiked 23,000 kilometers from Thailand to Spain. This year we will visit five of our favorite countries from last year. We will travel through Turkey and Georgia, visit Armenia, a new country for us, travel through Azerbaijan where we will catch a boat to Kazakhstan, conquer the Kazakh steppe a second time before we reach our final destination, Kyrgyzstan, where we will watch the World Nomad Games in September. And if we have time and money, we would love to visit Uzbekistan and explore the east of Kazakhstan. See you guys on the road! In the last episode we had just crossed into Georgia from Turkey with Skander, a Turkish truck driver and we were headed to Tbilisi. Because of a crazy storm we didn't make it and slept in his truck and the following morning we hitchhiked the remaining 50 kilometers to Tbilisi and walked to our couchsurfing host's place. The next day we ventured around this picturesque and welcoming city. We crossed the Peace Bridge, also called the Tampax Bridge, visited Nayakali Castle and learned about the mother of Georgia and just soaked up the atmosphere. Morning guys! Hello. Let's not wake anyone up. I think most people are awake though, it's 10 o'clock. We're going to a place called, Alex, you know it? Meskhta. We are actually going to try to hitchhike out of the city center, which is something that we normally don't do. We didn't even do that last year in Georgia, even though Georgia is a complete and pure hitchhiking paradise. Alex has not figured out how to get out of the city. Well, we know how to get out of the city, but we don't want to do that again because it's hard work. So we're going to try the easy way and just try and get a ride straight out of town. Yeah, we're going to see if that's easier. We've got a sign. So let's go. Leave the cat alone, Alex. Just licking my leg. <laughs> let's go. Bye bye. See ya. See ya. So here comes the moment of truth. Are we going to get a ride in the city? I am skeptical. Alex is a believer. So a very nice lady showed us to a new spot, just above where the cars were going slower and it took a few minutes and we've got a ride. Where are we going Alex? Somewhere on the way anyways, we're in the right direction now. So I'll see you in the next car. Thank you so much, Madlova. Alright, we're very close to Javadi Monastery, which is just behind Marlin up the hill. We can't see it. No, oh, somewhere behind there. So now we're walking along the motorway. We're gonna try to walk up this hill up to the monastery. On Maps Me it says there's a path to walk up, so the idea is to leave our bags somewhere in some bushes so we don't have to carry them and go up there. Check it out. Take some photos of the beautiful view and then head down to Mescheta or whatever this little village in front of me is called. Alright guys, we are going up to Chivari Monastery in 3, 2, 1, we'll be back! And here we are, Chivari Monastery is just behind. It was a very hot and sticky walk up, but we're gonna go and check it out, so let's go. Chivari Monastery is a 6th century Georgian Orthodox monastery built on top of a rocky outpost overlooking the town of Mekheta and it was the first Georgian UNESCO World Heritage Site. Bit of information for you guys, St Nino, who was a female evangelist 
who was also the enlightener of Georgia, erected a wooden cross on top of a pagan temple up here. So you might wonder why I'm wearing a headscarf. It's because in Georgian Orthodox churches, and generally in Orthodox churches, you need to cover your head as a woman. So that's what we're doing in order to be in here and be respectful. It's very nice. We have very high ceilings with nice rocky walls. Super cool place. We were just about to cross this road and this lovely guy, Wucha, right, I think I'm saying name right, uh, stopped and said he would take us to the next bridge further along the road. So that's perfect. Actually, you're ride number 71 of our journey so far. So very good. We got picked up. Actually, we didn't hitchhike. He just stopped and offered us a ride to the next bridge and I was dropped us off. And we're actually in a spot where we hitchhiked last year when we were going on the opposite road here. And yeah, let's see how many minutes it takes before we go to the next ride get into Mescheta. Changing spot. Haven't got picked up yet, hasn't been long, but our experience from Georgia is waiting times between half a minute and five minutes. Taking a little bit longer, but we're very close to the capital still, so that might be the reason. We'll see. It's also a motorway, not a small road. So we're going to walk about a kilometer and a half maybe to the junction and then we will get the traffic that is actually going into town which is much better and this way we get some exercise because we're lacking in that since uh, one and a half a month in Turkey getting picked up very easily and not walking at all so here we go exercising new spot take your up All right, we've got a ride with Afdandik. Okay, and he's taking us to Mesheka. I'm never saying that right. <laughs> I think it's difficult to say. Anyway, so that's good. Ride number 72, I think. Yeah. See you in a bit. Today, we've got Tbilisi, Jivari, Mesheta, Mesheta. Tomorrow, Oplitsike. Tomorrow, Oplitsike. Tomorrow. Tonight, camping. Alright guys, behind me is, I don't know, Marlon's going to put the name here for you and we're going to have a bit of lunch, have a little walk around, have a drink, check it out, so let's go. lunchtime and apparently in this city the food is supposed to be exceptional and uh, quite cheap compared to Tbilisi now we haven't had any food in Tbilisi yet so we've got really nothing to compare to but we're gonna head and see what we can find yes, we, we want to have Khinkali Khinkali dumplings hey there give us a thumbs up by the way we haven't said that today and subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and also leave a little comment below we are very indecisive we're in Mescete. We had some really bad Hinkali. I was looking forward to having that, but it was very good. The lady wasn't very nice. And we haven't seen anything really of this place, and now we're gonna leave. We're gonna go up to a cave monastery complex. It's very, very old. And to get there, we have to go up a small road for about 12 kilometers. Now, we're hoping there will be some cars on the road, otherwise, it will take a very long time. What else do we need up there? Water. Mm. 
There will be water. There are springs everywhere here. I don't think it will be a problem. That would I would be surprised. Now there is a bloody fly biting my leg, so I want to leave. So I'll see you on the road. It's not me. It's don't look at me. <laughs> no, it's a smaller fly than Alex. Right. Apparently this also means that we have to walk upwards and we've done that enough today already in my opinion And we want some nice secluded spot. Do you know what I say? No. What goes up must come down. What will that be? Us tomorrow. Us tomorrow. <laughs> Not today. Yeah. So we walked up a bit. It's very much uphill and it's very hot and there are absolutely no cars. So two cars have passed us I think. We're contemplating this might be a bad idea but we've stopped here now in the shade and we're gonna have a look how far it is to some of the smaller church ruins. So the place we want to go is like about 13 kilometers but in a few kilometers from here there are some smaller ruins and we might end up going there today instead and sleep there. Question still is water? Is there water there? Yeah that's the question. I'm just gonna look how far it is. We'll get back to your map. I want to say that we haven't slept much for the last week so we're like drained and not really in an um, adventure mood are we? Not entirely no. No. Uh, so let's hope that we get a good night's sleep and that we will be on it tomorrow again. Finally getting picked up, grabbing my bag to put it in the car. So we've got a ride up to Shua Bigme Monastery. Alice is going in there now to ask if they have any water because if they don't have that we cannot camp here and we would have to go all the way down to the lowlands again which would be a shame. However, I don't know where we would camp here because it's very hilly. So I will get back to you on that. So Alex has been uh, into the monastery to ask for water and for somewhere to camp and one of the monks has now walked Alex to a possible spot in the forest. So we'll see what they say when they come back. It would be good if it's a nice and flat spot. All right, we're walking up a very steep hill. Apparently there's a really old church on the top with lots of flat space according to a lovely monk I just spoke to, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, he was very nice. We talked about football and the World Cup and then he suggested we come up here for camping, so let's go. I said I didn't want to walk up hill more today when well, we walked up that hill earlier today to see the Shivari Monastery. And here we are and it's uh, bloody steep. <sighs> what do you say, Alex? I'm probably not looking very sexy right now, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's hot, I am sweating. Hopefully it'll be a lovely spot up on top. That's what I'm hoping for. Make it all worthwhile. The sweat, the tears, the blood. Not many flat spots, but there are some flattish spots. So I think we will sleep up here. I'm definitely not walking down again. Are you, Alex? No, it's very nice up here. Yeah, it's an ama there's an amazing view from up here. And this uh, church behind me, which I will show you later, it's from the 12th century. 12th to 13th century, yeah. So it's about 800 years old. And yeah, it's nice in there. You can see that there have been people up here, but I don't think people come here up here very regularly because it's quite a walk. No. Yeah. It's pretty cool, we've got this ancient church to ourselves. Yeah, and we're going to pitch our tent now so we can relax a little bit afterwards because normally we pitch our tent very late and then we never get any relaxed time. Absolutely. Where will the sun set? Which side? Uh, over there. Over there, Alex says. Let's see if we can get a good sunset maybe later. Maybe we'll be able to film a sunrise tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, maybe if we're up early enough. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good morning everybody, how are you? Remember to click like, hit the subscribe button and share and comment, yes. We went to bed about half 11, slept until like 
half seven, so we've had a good bit of rest. Just packing up a tent. I don't know if anyone's ever wondered what we sleep on when we camp. So if you'd like to look, this is Hikinchur Ultralight Sleeping Mat. Last year, we only slept on these sh shitty silver Quechua sleeping mats. And with these, oh my God, do we sleep good. Much better. So this Georgian Orthodox Church is from a 12th to 13th century, so around 800 years old, and it's really nice inside. We've got nice frescoes, and actually it looks like someone comes up here with some money on the table, someone's been writing something, but it's in really good condition, and it was very nice to be able to come up here and check it out. Alright guys, so we just checked out Shio McVine Monastery, it's very nice, they got some nice old cathedral, not cathedrals, but old monasteries, uh, it was very nice to walk around, unfortunately not allowed to take any videos, we did do one sneaky little video, but in the top one, the big one, we certainly didn't because there are other people in there and we wanted to be respectful and we're also monks walking around. Uh, now we're going to head down the hill, we're going to try and get a ride on this road where there's no traffic back into Mishekka, have lunch, and then we're going to try and head to Upalsike or Usplixike, I don't know how you say it. Anyway, so we'll... Huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's right anyway. Anyway, we'll see you on the way or there. Bye. That church right there is where we slept last night. It's quite high up. As you can see, it was a long walk up there for sure. Us with school kids who were up at the monastery at the same time as us passed. We stuck our thumbs out. He just gave us a smile, but he didn't stop. Then another car, which was the only car up there, passed us and they didn't stop. And they know that we have to walk 13 kilometers. I know it's our choice to hitchhike, but where's the solidarity? Georgia is normally super easy. Last year we hardly waited more than four minutes at any point. There's been one car going up here now. So there's one car up by the monastery, meaning they'll probably be up there for at least 40 minutes before they drive down again. So we just have to walk. And now it's fine, at least for me, because we're walking down. But once we're down to the, it's not even a village, just a few houses down there. Then it's up and it's up for quite a while. So that will be hard work. And hopefully we get picked up for that because Alex's niece are not doing very well. How are you knees Alex? Alright, let's hope that someone picks us up because Alex is carrying a very heavy bag. Mine is not as heavy and my knees seem to be able to handle going down better than Alex's. So. so we're basically done all the walking down. Now there's just walking up and I'm going to show you where we have to go and that's just a little part of it. Have a look. We have to get up there the road is like going like this up there till there that's where we're going there are now three cars up by the monastery and i think that only one of them has space for us so hopefully that car will stop on the way down please let it do so because it's a long walk i'll cry no i won't will you I might die and collapse on the floor We got a ride and we haven't started walking up yet so we're very lucky yay 
Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. And don't forget to turn on those notifications.